Hello, everybody. <clears throat> um, this is perhaps one of the most important conversations that I've ever had. Um, and it's really funny because uh, every conversation just seems to be even more and more important um, as I study the earth uh, and with everybody else here. Um, so a lot of this data has not, well, basically... Um, this is our planet Earth, and um, there's really no other planet um, like it within any reasonable distance. Um, so the decisions that we make on the planet here are very important, um, and we can't make any mistakes at all. So, um, <clears throat> And we need to be very careful about the wildlife. Um, and what we're going to talk about uh, tonight is... Um, is essentially as much as we possibly can about the public transportation on our planet. So there's an unbelievable amount of roads out there. Um, we're looking at primarily the trains right here, um, as well as a satellite image of the entire planet. Um, and you know, I, I've been working on this for years, uh, studying the planet, um, both logically and spiritually. So uh, basically what some of the conclusions here um, are really important um, to preserve the wildlife regions and also the ocean here. So um, what I've done here is actually minimal. Like we actually need to do a lot better job preserving uh, areas so um, we actually need to expand on these areas uh, and minimize the human footprint um, I have an extremely important conversation I sat down with the on the street uh, there's an indigenous native guy that uh, talked with me and recognized me and he we started talking and you know, he was looking he was homeless and I was trying to help him out um, maybe let him stay at my house or something and we're talking about housing, and we might not ever be able to build another house on this planet. Um, we just have so much real estate. Um, <clears throat> if I were to turn off this map, um, you can see that all of India is essentially populated. Like China is almost 100% populated uh, in this white region. Um, there's just vast amounts of road network, housing. Basically, there's very little wildlife land left at all. Um, almost 100% deforestation in many areas. Um, in fact, all of uh, some people say all of uh, you know certain areas that were entirely forested and now today are completely not forested. So um, there's just so many different aspects of this conversation. So the white areas here are primarily very urban. Um, so for example, uh, this part of Europe is heavily populated. The East coast is very heavily populated, but as you know, so is California, uh, Florida, Chicago is also heavily populated, but I wanted to look at the extreme cases here. Um, and you can see North India here and Eastern China, uh, with Shanghai and Beijing. Um, now the red areas are extremely important because these are wildlife areas that are also include some oceans. So these are transportation, um, that's actually encroaching in on the jungle. So there's a, an extremely important area that I wanted to highlight here on the Southwest side of the jungle that a lot of people are not talking about as well as this point right here in West Africa. So basically what's happening here is there's some very unusual rain and climate right on the back end of the jungle as well as on West Africa that essentially has the same climate as deep in the jungle. So it gives us a lot of wildlife uh, basically. And also on this back side of the jungle near Rwanda is an area that a lot of people really don't realize how critical wildlife is um, I have another map uh, that I could show you um, of all the species but basically we are running it's really not a good situation especially in Southeast Asia it's actually so unbelievable that I almost don't even like to talk about it because you know a lot of people want to go 
go uh, try to understand what's going on, but actually we just need to really preserve some of these areas. So particularly as you get out into Indonesia, Eastern Indonesia, um, <clears throat> and basically Oceania area, this area is very vital uh, for wildlife as well as the ocean. So believe it or not, these are the most polluting countries on the planet are Philippines, Indonesia, because they basically dump all their sewage and road waste directly into the ocean. And also not only just any ocean, but this is coral reefs. This is the only coral reefs that we really have on our entire planet um, in this region in Southeast Asia, as well as in the Caribbean, uh, some of these windward islands uh, and things. But the problem is just a totally different thing because you have basically a billion people all encroaching on the ocean here. Um, and I basically outlined some of these areas. So you, the green areas are basically deep jungle areas. Um, and actually, you know, it's so critical in the Congo jungle and the Amazon that I just had to even divide it up even into further portions. So these are actually routes that can save us from the jungle, some of them. So this, this coastline here, actually people don't need to live right in the jungle. They can live in west, southwest coast here, or they can actually go out into Tanzania and even all on the coast here as well. So there are some other places to live outside of the jungle and areas that basically should be for wildlife. So the blue areas are actually even more, are extremely important as well because it's actually ocean front uh, and very important uh, as well. So we got just an unbelievable amount of information to talk about. I'm gonna go through these really quickly because actually people's attention span is not very good. Um, there's just a lot of details here. Um, Central America in general has a whole area um, that actually is outside the jungle but is still very jungly. Um, and there's huge amounts of population as you can see here in El Salvador and, and actually just south of Mexico. So this is actually vital because the uh, you can see there's a train line that runs here but it actually doesn't run through here. So cutting down on the road traffic could definitely be done by creating new uh, essentially rain, train system in Central America which is one of the most important new concepts that we could possibly talk about because driving right through the jungle is probably not going to work um, it's not going to be healthy for the animals or the environment or, or even the streams so what you'll notice even in my small town is that you know we we don't even have we only have forty thousand people we're talking about towns of millions and millions of people in my town of forty thousand people the stream is absolutely polluted from the road runoff and this is only forty thousand people we're talking about tens of millions of people living all throughout here in Central America. So road runoff is a very serious problem um, in general. And here is a whole new way. A lot of food comes from Mexico in the United States. And actually, uh, this whole region actually is pretty vital farmland. Um, you can go to the grocery store and you are not even able to buy anything from the United States in the wintertime uh, if you're buying produce. So a lot of that comes from Mexico and there's actually no train system whatsoever along this coastline uh, that could really cut down on the uh, cost as well as uh, public transportation. So here you can see down in Louisiana, we actually do have some oceanfront train line, but we don't have anything on the Houston side or on the Florida side. Um, and then here you can kind of see the East Coast where we do have uh, connecting some of the major cities, but actually out along the coast, uh, there isn't very good public transportation and anyone that knows New York City knows that you can get by a hundred percent never having a car in New York City um, and in fact it's a terrible thing to even have a car in New York you start to realize so public transportation definitely works if you have any doubt about that you're a hundred percent wrong public transportation definitely works New York City is an excellent example of that um, now you can see around the Great Lakes here, there is actually quite a lot of trains going through here, but on the Canada side, they're actually doing uh, a lot of trains as well. So you can see there's just a lot of new ideas here. And you can see that we've kind of divided up the train route and the new public transportation along two sections or even four sections here. 
as well as some Caribbean ideas. So you can see Cuba has basically done a fairly reasonable job of the train system across the entire country, whereas there is a major problem in Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica has a little bit of a train, Puerto Rico has absolutely no train. And actually in Taiwan and Hunan and many islands in Southeast Asia, they've actually done a train all the way around the island entirely making it possible to live and work without using a car. So here you can see a zoomed in area. You can see uh, Jamaica as well as some of this other side of the coast. A lot of this may actually turn into farmland and it can be used as a way to get farmland out of the Amazon jungle and actually do that farming up in the Yucatan. So Mexico has a huge responsibility to work with the jungle to pull people out of places as even far as uh, you know Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador. A lot of those farmers need to just do farming in Central America and not right in the jungle. So you can see here there is actually starting to be trains even heading into the deepest part of the jungle. There's road systems. I didn't turn on the road systems here, but you can actually the roads go quite far and you can see uh, there's quite a lot of now here you can start to see the population this is almost 100 percent populated and you're starting to see almost 100 percent population on the entire island here as well as this island is starting to fall apart here southeast asia is a complete mess so uh here you can see what they've done is in thailand they basically created a road a train system along the coast here um, that's vital that almost makes i think it makes it all the way to singapore but they do not have a train on this side and part of the only reason is that there's this is the only sliver of wildlife in all of thailand pretty much left is right in these regions so it's very dangerous because creating the trains and um, sometimes creates more access um, that is not good for the wildlife and here you can see in japan one of the major problems is there's no farmland in Korea or Japan. They all depend on farmland up here in northern China, uh, as well as farming here. But it's basically almost 100% populated as well as farmland. So it's very densely populated and very dense farming. And you can also see here in China, China is about two times, three times, maybe even 10 times ahead on public transportation. So what we see here is that China really knows what they're doing. You can there's these are high speed lines so it's not only these are the yellow lines that you see internationally but then china also has a ton of red lines as well as japan you can see here and you can see that japan has basically done the entire coast almost the entire coast of japan you can take by public transportation um not quite true in north korea kind of true there and then part of south korea the coastline is not complete so it's very rocky and hilly there so it's difficult so here you can see in vietnam they've basically done a coastal railroad so you can basically get between all the major cities in vietnam via the coastal railroad and similar here in thailand you can see down here um and i really wanted to talk more about the philippines but essentially it's becoming a complete catastrophe because they are polluting the ocean more than any other country in the world they're populating all these islands building roads it's just a complete environmental disaster so and it's even getting worse because jakarta is going to move their capital to this island and then start populating this whole entire island which is basically wildlife at this point point. and here you can see some details about jakarta maybe what they should consider doing rather than moving the entire capital out of out of java they could actually build a new coastal line along here like they've done in japan like they've done in taiwan and basically move some of the population to the south coast and even along here as well um, some of the only vital farmland is actually in these regions as well so it helps with transportation of food and you can see bali over here um, basically has no train system whatsoever um so you know public Again, um, China definitely knows what they're doing. They have all these high-speed trains. So you can see here, um, basically, even in Hong Kong, uh, there's actually some missing links uh, there as well. So here you can see in Australia, uh, essentially the entire coast is great for trains, all the way from Sydney 
um, around and down to Melbourne. And actually, Melbourne has a way to get even over to Perth. And some of the best farming is actually right along here. And you can get access to the farms uh, with food and public transportation as well. So in Europe, uh, it looks like the situation is pretty good. Um, but it's... Uh, it's a little bit, uh, I've heard that they've gotten uh, new rates uh, in some of these countries where you can travel for unbelievably low rates um, for the entire month, um, I think even free, so uh, depending on if you're a citizen or, or whatnot. So, um, but there's still a lot of work to be done in Europe. So it's just so densely, if I added the population here, this is only the railroads. If we add the roads plus population but everything, it's basically there's no farmland left, making Ukraine a huge piece of the puzzle here because so much of the food, uh, the wheat and other things came uh, from that region. So here you can see in the Middle East, um, they've actually in uh, Dubai, they've actually built the rail raid road here, but actually in Qatar and all the way Kuwait, there's actually no railroad here. And then even in Iran, there's a whole opportunity here, but there's no food. So all the food in Iran is actually on the northern side here. Um, and there's actually no railroad, public transportation there or on the south side. This is all valuable beachfront property. Dubai, if you know about it, you know, they're selling lots of very expensive real estate. It's also very extremely hot in the 90 degree plus. So that's a big debate. Um, but certainly it would probably be better to live right on the ocean front than it would be deep in land. So it makes almost no sense to have some of these roads. And what I was mentioning again is that we should probably build no more houses on our planet, no more roads on our planet, and just simply build up if we're building a house and more higher density, or actually focus on public transportation. So all these countries can basically change their budget entirely to do only train transportation. Uh, and you can see they can collaborate with places like Pakistan, one of the most populated countries in the world. I think it's the sixth. So basically there's plenty of help that could work on this and a lot of beachfront property all through here. Why live in Dubai for such an extreme price when you can basically live anywhere along the coast here if there was public transportation? So that is a long-term plan. Now in India, you can see they've basically created on Western India a train track here, but this is the only wildlife region in all of India. So the problem here is that these trains are actually violating a lot of wildlife space. Whereas on eastern side of India, they've also created a seafront route here for the train. But whether that works or not um, continuously is a question. Um, in Africa, there's basically no train system whatsoever um, in terms of things that um, people are used to. So the actual truth is that Africa could do could make the rest of the world look completely silly and could actually do this so much better because now it's a fresh slate for Africa. Um, look at all the trains in India and you can see basically Africa definitely does have some train systems. However, they don't have any coastal train. Like in India, they have the entire coast here and also in West Africa, they could do that as well. So that means there's billions and billions and trillions of dollars, whatever the currency is, of oceanfront real estate both on the west side here and the east side and they can pull people out of the jungle and live right along the coastline rather than some random place right in the jungle you can see the population is definitely starting to get right in the jungle and right here in the back door this is actually a very important topic so there's an there's a there's another special jungle region right over here uh, in the climate map that i need to show you so um and south america the same situation is that uh, they actually could create a railroad called the La Paz or the Peace Train, and that could run all the way down to Chile and basically prevent people from wanting to live in the jungle. They have no way to get around. There's no road system. There's no real uh, way to get around on public transportation. So there's a definite route here. And this all goes around Rio. So you can see there's a north route here and a south route down to Montevideo and possibly even Argentina. So these are some of the most important trains in the world because it's next to the jungle, right? You have the jungle here and you basically absolutely have to create opportunities for people to live 
all on the ocean front so they can say, well, it's way better to live along the ocean front here. You know, it's 80 degree year round temperatures, um, low cost of living, especially along some of the areas here. Uh, and basically they could get out of the jungle if they had an opportunity to do so. So again, Central America has a really new opportunity for farming. So a lot of that farming that is starting to encroach in on the jungle, for example, Bogota, Colombia, is actually got roads and Venezuela is deep in the jungle now with their farming. There's so many acres, it's unbelievable how far into the jungle people are farming. So a lot of that needs to be shifted out of Bogota. Why do you have to live right in the jungle where it's not gonna be nice as nice as living right on the beachfront here and farming over here? So that definitely needs to change. And if there was public transportation, you can see there's some public transportation right in here. Mexico has a great line right here, but then it basically misses out on this whole section here as well as here. It's an excellent opportunity to work with Cuba because Cuba is communist. And actually Cuba can revitalize the entire economy and work together with, with all these Caribbean islands because they've already understood what to do, both from a helping out as a society in terms of communism, as well as working with Jamaica. There's African Africans here, Africans in Haiti, and then lots of uh, indigenous natives all throughout these areas. So definitely some opportunities to work with a lot of different people. In the United States, uh, I, drew, I drew this very differently than most people might expect. So much of our food comes from California. In fact, they say 50% could come from either Mexico or California, in, depending on the season. And sometimes it's 100% from Mexico and sometimes it's 100% from California. Um, but these routes actually are food routes because we have Memphis in the middle here, all the way down to Louisiana where you have sugar as well as Florida. So these routes, actually the north-south routes, are actually extremely important for food as well as the ocean front here, you can have a lot of real estate and property. Um, as well as look at what happened in Miami. The entire coast is all elderly housing, empty. There's a lot of empty buildings just all throughout Miami, Fort Lauderdale, all along this road. It's just ridiculous how expensive the prices are and it's all going underwater here when you can actually shift a lot of that over to here and have some of the same climate if there was better public transportation and things so again here's the global map uh i'm just trying to see if i missed anything in specific um, but there's so many different areas to look at on this um now here again you can see some very vital pieces of the jungle that need to be played correctly on the train so these red routes actually do not exist yet um it may be very wise to just pull air all these people living in here are actually encroaching right in the jungle this train is actually causing more harm than good um, and in fact, it would be better to just live, you can live right on the lake here, as opposed to out in the middle of nowhere. So part of the problem is that a lot of this is small farming communities, and that is also vital food that basically feeds all the way down to Zimbabwe, all on this train route. So this train probably does run a lot of food. Um, however, there's a lot of coastal uh, opportunities on the West Coast too, but these train routes, and you actually maybe should not even create a train here, because the wildlife habitat is coming right out to the jungle here and actually needs access. All these people essentially have to move. Um, and there's actually called the Congo War going on. And that's a whole separate topic as well, a terrifying topic. So here you basically have this whole entire west side of the Africa as well. There could be a new train station. And this could make the rest of the world, Africa could be the leader in fact, Africa is at the center of the entire world's map. Let me just show you this map really quick so you can get a basic idea here. So Africa basically does almost, there's very little trains going on here, right? As well as in South America. Basically, it's mostly India, China, Europe, and the United States. But Africa could actually show the world how to do everything correctly if they just did the train system correctly along the coastline here, um, making billions and even trillions lots of money for real estate along the ocean front um, a lot of people complain that all the wealth is in south africa but all that wealth could you could actually have very great property 
Hall along Mozambique here, Angola, uh, which interestingly speaks Portuguese. So because they speak Portuguese, they can collaborate with Brazil. And this whole train line here, there's no train line going along. This is Brazil 101. There's a highway that runs along here, but there's no train, train system. So right along the coast is Brazil 101, and there's no highway as well here. Um, it's basically the same climate as Brazil. Very similar, I shouldn't say same, but similar climate in terms of temperature uh, and the sun and everything. So a lot of that real estate is actually very valuable. Um, and actually the wealthiest woman in all of Africa is from Angola. So there's a lot of wealth here um, being able, and this, when there is property here to live at, people move out of the jungle and they decide to live on the ocean front, making this some of, some of the best property in the entire planet be completely undeveloped so africa has a lot of great future here um, especially if they do the public transportation you can see there's actually no coastal route remember in japan in china in india united states europe they've all built a train system along the coast now the problem is this particular area of the coast is actually jungle so there's a whole wildlife problem so this is actually a very special region in africa there's not there's starting to be a lot of population here there's almost 1.1 billion plus people living in africa now so actually if all of africa decided to be 100 percent public transportation it could change everything they could be a leader in the entire earth for what to do with the jungle and the wildlife and everything so it's really awesome opportunity now it's really complicated. This is some of the most difficult discussion is in Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. I'm not even gonna talk about it. However, um, you can see I moved this map down to Bolivia and La Paz. So basically this is the rail railroad here. And the problem is that there's very, very special habitat right along this this jungle back door. And the problem is these, these cities actually go right into the jungle. And as soon as you start polluting these rivers, it actually pollutes the entire Amazon jungle river. So if it drains off, the dog is barking next door. And he did really explain to this, you know, if you have a little speck of water that gets dirt in your cup, how do you feel about that? You get sick from that. Imagine millions of people. This is an entire city of many millions of people draining all their wastewater and road traffic this is not even the road map i didn't even show how bad the situation is um, it's just unbelievably terrible so basically uh los angeles also uh has really no uh train system you can see here along the coast the northern part and the southern part of la actually does have a pretty good train system and I just, I'm, the dog is still barking. I, I wish I could talk more about the wildlife situation, um, how vital it is um, to use public transportation. So basically, the, here's more stuff showing basically Portland and uh, into Seattle and some areas. I want to get back to the wildlife discussion here. So actually, Hong Kong, here you can see Taiwan has entirely done the train around the entire perimeter as well as Hunan Island and remember Vietnam also had that and actually China has done the high-speed train not only a regular not only of a, a train but a high-speed train around the entire south coast of China including all of Hong Kong Bay uh, Guangzhou Shenzhen uh, basically making it very this is high-tech most of the best 90% of the best processors and cpus and gpus come from taiwan and you can tell that they have definitely made an effort as well as in china here hong kong shenzhen and so on but they've definitely made an effort on public transportation the san francisco bay area is absolutely terrible in terms of traffic so uh, silicon valley has a lot to learn uh, from taiwan hong kong and uh, even vietnam so uh, and maybe part of that problem can be solved down in Los Angeles as well. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, if you looked at the Chinese, China map, uh, China is two times, three times, or even 10 times further ahead on public transportation. India actually has a long way to go because they don't really have any high-speed rail whatsoever. Um, 
and you know looking at that discussion is a very important question um, I don't want to get into that discussion yet but you can see here the high-speed rail in Europe and in China and you basically have almost no high-speed rail in the United States and in fact a lot of this almost no one when I took the train across the country there is so many empty seats it was probably it was probably more than half empty it was probably I was only 25 percent full so it was really pathetic I took a sleeper car and it was really fun to just walk around on the train talk with people and even try to work on some things so basically you can see Africa and South America are just beginning to work on this so rather than uh, not doing this correctly they can change everything so here you can see again Rio de Janeiro so you have this whole northern side and south side for Sao Paulo you can kind of see some of the train system here um, but uh, anyway so I think there's some roads there as well so here in Rio de Janeiro you can see all this beachfront property this is one of the largest cities on the planet and there's basically just only recently have they started to work on the oceanfront train lines uh, basically helping out with uh, you know decreasing the terrible expense of living right near downtown um, and having public transportation access so you can see this is only five kilometers so it's a very short distance here actually so the train line is actually very reasonable to get in and out of the city so here's a very interesting discussion you can see how far ahead china is basically every single major metro passenger stuff is done in china you see india still has a long way to go there's no even notion of mumbai mumbai basically is one of the largest cities in the world not even listed on this whole entire graph so uh, and you can see even the tech technology places you know see you can see here san francisco bay area compared to taipei it's like there's like almost no one riding the train in san francisco washington dc almost nobody right and we actually have a vast it's not just washington dc there's you know uh, many cities located all near all the way to new york city um, there should be train passengers so there's just not and you can see paris is doing a reasonable job now new york if you know anything about new york you can see new york is doing great but china is even doing better than new york city so everyone in new york city knows i mean you you just don't use a car in new york city so you use the train and once you understand the new york city concept you basically realize that public transportation is definitely the way to go so um you know you pay one fee for the entire month and you basically can ride as many times and as much as you want um, which is great so uh, and you can see with the road system approximately all the roads are basically done in the united states india and china and actually we should probably never build any more roads all of this budget for the highway expenditures in the united states billions of dollars in india china should all be used for public transportation again you can see how far ahead china is <laughs> there's basically no doubt that the metro size is very vast in china in fact even one of these takes care of multiple cities <laughs> any one of these cities in china um, so basically um, very far ahead in china and you can see uh, roads by country so basically the problem is the budget in the united states has all been for highways um, as well as in india so india probably is using their budget uh, essentially for for highways um, which is completely ridiculous um, and then again here you can see more stuff in Africa I'm sorry I got so many slides here but again West Africa you can see basically all this to Accra and you probably should stop the, ro the railroad right through here this is actually road system so this is not train this is actually both I think so uh, but you can see Lagos all these cities can collaborate on working on that and this is actually a very dangerous part of Nigeria because it's a delta it's a floodplain you have huge amounts of population through here and actually getting right in the jungle and they're actually just <laughs> the problem with building more in here is it basically starts to get into the jungle so i mean it's already the jungle so north africa um already has a train system pretty much through here um and it didn't quite work out but it's interesting to discuss um essentially you can have mediterranean lifestyle all around north africa um, for much less cost um, and then again you're talking about all this coastline uh in in africa and then here is some more details um, sorry i'm running out of some 
steam here but again this whole area probably needs to be wildlife so we have to do an entire wildlife corridor these are the most dangerous roads in all of africa for wildlife if you know anything about the jungle this is the deepest part of the jungle and we actually have population and roads going deep into the jungle you can see all this and i didn't even show how bad it is so and this is millions and millions of people all pushing right into the jungle so a lot of this they don't have any opportunities why live here when you can live right on the beachfront a lot of that is because it's a different country you have to have a passport kenya is starting to work a new passport system where you don't even need a pet if you're an african you can basically go to kenya and no problem so that's going to radically change and help a lot and um, but there's some new cities that need to be uh, worked on so <coughs> things are not working good enough in uganda and basically that means the south side of the lake and this the problem here is that a lot of people from rwanda are basically trying to live right here where all this should be jungle there needs to be a passageway for these animals to get water this is all populated by people so all these people basically wanted to go into the jungle to check it out essentially lake kivu this lake and the other lake all of them basically have no choice because that's their country and they can't get out because of passports and visa restrictions. So basically maybe working on a railroad system, you can basically move everyone out of this region by essentially working, everyone here can work on coastal road system. And that means billions, you know, there's Africa's looking to get maybe even 2 billion, 3 billion people soon. Uh, where are they going to live? So more in the jungle let's hope not so basically there has to be beachfront property or something going on here's a map of india's highway system china's highway system brazil's and again you know this is primarily the road system not you can see uh the numbers for the road systems internationally so what got me started on all this is really thinking about farming right like we're running out of food where the wildlife's being destroyed. I looked at India because it's one of the, it's basically the most populated place, China and India. So I was looking at how to do farming better in India. Um, and basically this whole discussion uh, really, it needs to be fun, right? People are not gonna wanna do anything unless it's a fun thing to do. Um, so a tour of the farmland became vital. The problem is people, are in such terrible conditions in India, in some instances, uh, that basically they don't even want to, it's just, it's really bad. So you have to pick a tour route that is beautiful and safe from the extreme population pressure as well as pollution. So it's very complicated to get that going. So it basically what's been happening is that people are pushing up into the Himalayas as well as the wildlife. So this tour actually goes all the way through the north side and then along the coast of India here. So you get, uh, you can actually use a lot of the train system. This is actually using the road, um, but it basically needs to be on the train. So, or hitchhiking. So we're gonna discuss that too. So this is all very important farmland for approximately a billion and even two billion more people. So you can see here uh, some of the stops along the route here. So. Basically, and we're tr I'm trying to work on a documentary um, because the situation is going to get so bad this winter time um, in in basically Pakistan, Afghanistan, refugee crisis. There's stories every day of people trying to get out, um, you know, of Afghanistan and even head into Pakistan. And Pakistan is seeing arresting people, and there needs to be a way for people to travel essentially down this route. And we're trying to hopefully getting a documentary about some refugees. Um, and then here is Gujarat. So on the Pakistan side, you can see that basically this is the only hope for farmland and it's like desert, right? So you basically have one of the most populated countries in the world, Pakistan, right next to India and some really <laughs> interesting farmland. And you, here you can start to see the flood zone. And what's happening here is that this is basically reaching out to Africa. So Pakistan, is kind of needing food from somewhere else. And you can see the hand just really kind of digging into the desert here. And it gets even more scary when you start to see that the population is actually like a tumor, right? So you have that, it's becoming so populated in Pakistan that basically there's no, there's no green in here because it's housing. So this is basically a tumor 
and they're taking over all the farmland and it's really scary um, because where people actually have to farm in their house this should all turn green all the rooftops everything needs to be every single house in, in asia basically needs to have a farm on the roof inside i'm trying to farm in my apartment i've been uh, you know, growing apple seeds and all kinds of fruits and trying to do as much as I possibly can uh, indoors. So here's some more details in Pakistan because it's basically the forefront of the food problem on our planet into the Middle East as you get towards Afghanistan and you can see some very significant details on this map. So here's on the other side, on the Bangladesh side, you can start to see there's wildlife, very vital wildlife regions here they're, they're the only wildlife they basically this all used to be wildlife it's all 100 percent farm now so here again this is actually some of the most polluted area in the world some days this will all turn gray because of the traffic the road traffic is so bad in china and in india so they still even despite china doing two times three times ten times better a job they still need to do probably three times more of the public so even in china they have to do three times more of the public transportation that means india has to do like 30 times right to even catch up to china so basically the public transportation thing if you look at the cloud maps you'll look at the pollution maps on a day-to-day -day basis this could you can't even see the ground uh from the satellite so here you can see also the questions on uh the uh, electrical grid and just looking at the importance of that so water problems are everywhere around the entire planet you can see particularly in pakistan particularly in the middle east and also in china unbelievable amounts of problems there's actually less problems anyway uh and actually africa is doing pretty good and south america is doing pretty good on water so here you can see deforestation that i was talking about essentially india has deforested all of india china is being completely deforested as well and actually a lot of the farming is done in the floodplain so actually all of china's railroad system there's no excuse to do a railroad china's already done the railroad in an entire floodplain so actually it, it, it really you need to do the you need to do a road, railroad no matter where it is you, <coughs> here you can kind of see some of the topography of india and some regions uh to think about so again here's india upside down you can see some of the geology how that kind of connects all the way to myanmar um, and being a continuous area <coughs> and actually this is some of the most important new farmland on the planet is in myanmar it's kind of like a war zone right now because essentially the food is so vital there um it's don't believe what they say on the internet it's basically a food problem um, as well as a public transportation so here in Gujarat, you can start to see how dependent probably Pakistan and India is. Mumbai has no farming done in there, and basically all the farming is done in Gujarat. Um, and that should be shared with Pakistan, and that could be worked on with a new train system as well as this heads out to Africa. Here you can see some of the live road traffic, and you can see there's a discontinuity here. So it's actually really hard to bring food into Pakistan. Um, and actually, you know, even in, in India, you can see there's no real way to get across here. So, again, the population is hugely significant in northern India. Um, and the scary part is even here is populated, right? It's the lighter color. But, and you can see almost 100% populated here, 100% populated there, as well as farmland. So, pretty uh, interesting and scary to think about. Now, you can see Bangladesh actually kind of avoid region right in between bangladesh and calcutta uh, and nighttime more nighttime photography of pakistan uh essentially looking at this northern part heading up into afghanistan and you can see also the population again huge uh influence here uh, all throughout northern india and then kind of the road systems in pakistan so more of that cancer question so you can see that basically these regions here are starting to become cancerous because they're basically taking up with housing right rather than farmland it's basically becoming housing so and the scary part is it's 100 percent farmed so if you look at is that we zoomed in here everything is farmed in india there's nothing left <coughs> it's all farmland so it's almost street view is pretty amazing to look at but here's one of the most important roads in the world it's called asia highway one it basically goes from japan all the way through china all the way down here through here all the way through northern india afghanistan iran um, 
and then out to Turkey, so and then even into Europe. So here's another discussion on looking at how to solve some food problems all the way from the port of Karachi, which is Port Qasim, which is there's actually two ports there, all the way heading almost into Afghanistan, and how the river system is very vital. So there's actually a train system that runs here, but actually no real train system running on the other side. So and then here in Africa, again, looking at just what to do because basically all this area needs to be wildlife. So Rwanda is trying to pull out of, I mean, they're, they're basically, you can see they've basically deforested that part of the jungle. So, uh, and some things. So again, what I was trying to do is focus on some farming tours to help people think about food. And a lot of that needs to be done with public transportation, which in some cases is not is actually pretty difficult so here you can see some of the farmland on the east coast and looking at a possible tour and some ideas to help out with that so that is all the slides wow um, i'm sorry um trying to go through as much as possible so on this map uh that i have here and i'll post this um, there's a ton of data here to look at so let me just go through everything so you can add airports seaports uh railroads regular roads uh, hydrological basins which are very important to keep on that map um, and actually I try to keep the rivers maps on here too but it starts to get a little bit cluttered um, on the internet but when I'm actually studying it I always look at the river system um, to see what's going on uh, specifically but you can see it makes a huge difference so some of these major rivers are super important now the hydrological basins essentially give you an idea uh, for where the water zones are so you can see the areas that are dependent I use those rather than the, than the international borders because it's actually tells us about the water situation. So all of this stuff is very helpful and I'll send a link to you so you can look at it in great detail. So again, there is a lot of opportunities to make a lot of money uh, in all these aspects. So all these diagrams, every single area needs help and there's just so many just roads trains everything all these areas around the world so each one of these cities are huge uh, for public transportation but like we mentioned china probably has to do three times better job just to get rid of all the pollution um, and if china is that dense on railroads they're probably gonna have to even convert the road system to train systems so um, and actually you know in china you actually are not allowed to drive certain days of the week they tag your license plate and your it's a totally different thing so and actually uh, you know throughout the world they're starting to do that so India has a huge I mean 30 times that's a huge number to start thinking about but that pollution is not going to go away unless there's serious amounts of public transportation so again here's the United States uh, and then the global map uh, that I really wanted you to look at carefully so really reconsider what we're thinking about especially in the jungle and in Southeast Asia, those topics are hugely important. And the United States, and actually there's so much hope in Central America, um, just huge amounts of real estate, so much money, so many different projects to be worked on. Uh, right here, close to the United States, um, um, you know, you can fly from New York City to Puerto Rico and different areas for like $50 now. So there, uh, if you buy the ticket ahead of time, so, or $100. Um, and, uh, just so many different areas in South America as well as in Africa. So actually huge opportunities, unbelievable opportunities uh, to uh, think about. So, and just more stuff. So hopefully all this has been really helpful for you. Thank you so much uh, for all the effort here. This is so much information um, and we really have a huge responsibility uh, to work on these things. So every <laughs> Thank you so much. And I just really wanted to rethank everyone again so much uh, for all the help uh, trying to look at this. I would gladly try to work with you no matter what you're trying to deal with, what the problem is. I've learned so much from trying to help other people um, with their problems uh, in Africa, South America, India, wherever. So it's been very helpful um, to try to see what I can do to help. Um, and I'm so thankful. Again, please let me know what you're trying to think about, uh, what you're working on. I'll try to post all this information 
and and uh, I'll see you later. Chao, thank you so much. And I'll definitely be praying for you and that you'll think about the Earth in a totally new way. Um, and even think about Antarctica because, hey man, Antarctica looks like a brain. Let's listen to the Earth and try to do some really cool stuff. And please try to stay positive and be happy about things. And we'll try to get these problems solved as soon as possible. Thank you so much.